All right, we have Travis Beckham coming on the show, former Wisconsin Badger great, former Super Bowl champion. Uh, Travis, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm great, man. I'm glad to be on the show. How are you doing? I'm doing well. And uh, if you can update for, for fans who might not know, what are you up to these days? I uh, So I'm back with, with UW. Um, I got introduced or I got inducted to the Wisconsin Hall of Fame last year. And, and one of my goals uh, was to get back with UW and be an asset to the current athletes. Um, so now I work on the corporate sponsorship side uh, for UW. Um, obviously, NIL is a big thing now. So, um, yeah, anything from corporate sponsorships uh, to NIL, um, as well as representing campus as well. Good deal. Very cool. And, and obviously, you had a decorated at, uh, career at Wisconsin. was cut short your, uh, your senior year due to injuries. But what was your, your, your proudest moment at Wisconsin as a player? Um, man, just coming coming out of the gate with the heat questions, huh? Um, yes, sir. Sure. <laughs> um, you know what? Probably, I, I, I think I think for, for me, it started when I was early, when I was young. Uh, it was like my freshman year, and that was the year we played at Minnesota. Uh, we were down. That was when uh, Jonathan Casillas blocked the punt. But I, we, were, we were all freshmen. That was my freshman class. And, and just being able to, to see the excitement um, around winning that game, um, seeing how, how important it was to get that ax. Um, and I would probably say like that was probably one of my most uh, memorable moments at, at the university. Um, it was also um, probably my junior year at Ohio State. Um, Tyler Donovan threw a, threw a deep ball in the back of the end zone um, that actually oh, yeah. happened, to, happened to be in, in the movie Draft Day. So um, that was awesome. But um, I mean, there's a ton of things that um, were memorable, uh, but, a, but a few things stick out. Right. And, and I'm always really into just like pro athletes and their, their fitness routines, their, their, their diet. And you put up 225, 28 for 28 reps at the combine and, and you have long arms. So that is not easy to do. It's a little different than someone who you see at the gym who's like five, six and just pounding out. Yeah. No, no yeah. disrespect to that. But that point <laughs> being physics, that is You're very gonna start a war. Yeah, You're sir, start a war. Yeah. But but it, it's, it's not easy to do. And I just want to. Yeah. What, what was your uh, your your lifting regimen in the off season in college, and then during the season, what does that look like? And then if you can elaborate, the same thing for pros: off season versus the regular season. Yeah, so um, so it was pretty strict. Um, I mean, well, to start with high school, our our our, um, our high school coach was was really adamant about being in the weight room, and um, I was always just naturally strong, um, and got to Wisconsin. Um, and it was, we were on a strict regimen as far as, um, eating recovery. Um, obviously our food intake, our calories, uh, I didn't have it as bad as the other guys because everyone had to make sure that, th that they were at weight and weren't over. Um, I was always underweight. Um, but, uh, I think I, I, I built a really strong bond with our, um, our strength coach at the university, um, Brian Bott. Now he owns several gyms. Uh, sports advantage um, and he had a really huge impact on my career as far as going above and beyond and making sure that I was stretching and my recovery was huge and just putting the proper things in my body um, but yeah I mean it was pretty much uh, explosive movements um, I think at Wisconsin I had the tight end record I don't know if they, they do like the lifting record still there but but put up 475 uh, when I was like 230 um, as a tight end. And, and like you said, putting up 228 at the combine, um, I didn't have an opportunity to, to run or anything because like you said, uh, broke, my, broke my leg my, my senior year, but um, had the opportunity to bench press. But um, yeah, I mean, it, there's a, a lot of uh, strategic thinking that goes into, I mean, holding your breath. You go out, you see some of these guys that go out to the combine, that go out and train for the combine, and they have specific guys for each individual, whether it's uh, the 40 yard dash, whether it's the vertical jump, whether it's bench press. Um, they have guys and, and they have secret tips to, to make you uh, to pretty much maximize your exposure. All right, good deal. And, and on just like a day-to-day -day basis, how often are you lifting in the off season in college and the pros? Um, so so pretty much when we're with the team um, in college, it's, it's probably more. 
Um, I would probably say every day. And then when you get to your little break, you go home um, and they, they basically send you with a regimen to, to follow and, and they hold you accountable to make sure that you're doing what you need to do to get yourself prepared for the upcoming season. Uh, but the pros, it, it's a little bit different. It's more, um, I think in college, it's more of building up your body. Um, in the NFL, it's more so uh, maintaining it um, and doing the right list, doing them the correct way. Um, I remember uh, there was a year, I think it was like my, my junior or my third year in the NFL, and, and we had um, like eight hamstring injuries in, in training camp. And the first thing they want to point the fingers to is, is, is what are we doing in the weight room? So, um, so again, I, I think uh, college is more so building up that body. And then once you get to the NFL, um, I mean, your body is, is your brand. That's your business. Um, and it's more so maintaining that as opposed to trying to make you do 12,000 different Olympic lifts. All right, good deal. And then uh, food intake. How many calories are you trying to uh, get in your system when you were trying to gain weight in college? I, you know, that's a good question because I, I really never paid attention. Um yeah, I never really paid attention. I know some of the other guys did, uh, especially like the offensive linemen. And, and I, I could just never put on weight. Um, I mean, I was Super Bowl. I was 226 pounds. I mean, oh, I, wow. I went I went to Wisconsin. Yeah, I went to Wisconsin. I played at Wisconsin at like 225. So throughout the year, um, in the beginning of the year, um, I would probably say, say early September, I would probably be my heaviest at like 230. Um, and then obviously training camp is just a different beast. Like it's super hard to, to hold on to, to weight at training camp. But, but yeah, I mean, I played the Super Bowl at 226. So it was always a, um, it was always a challenge for me to figure out how many calories I was putting in my body and, and keeping on that weight. Sure. So I, I, I thought I saw you were, you were like 242, you were listed or you weighed that much at the, the combine. Was that, yeah. was that just yeah. to show like scouts like, Hey, I, I weigh this much, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's funny is that uh, it, 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 you are correct. It was 242, um, but that was a ton of water weight. I mean, I probably okay. drank like three bottles, like one, one liters of bottles, like right before I, I weighed in. And as soon as All I right. got done off the stage, I literally went and, and peed for probably like five minutes straight. <laughs> so um, a lot of that, again, a lot of that was due to the fact that my senior year and, and because going into the combine, I, I couldn't run. I couldn't even jog. Um, so I wasn't doing a ton of cardio. Yeah. So I was just putting on that weight, drinking a ton of insurers. Um, and, and yeah, that was the heaviest I, I've ever been. Um, but then as, as soon as I, I, I peed, I mean, I probably peed out about six pounds. So, <laughs> Well, did you, I mean... You were on the smaller side as a tight end. Did you ever think about just instead of gaining weight, losing some weight and moving over to receiver? So, so not, not really. I mean, because uh, I was probably, again, I was probably around the, the, the 230 range um, in the league and and Ramsey's Barden uh, played at, at Cal Poly or played at did he play um whatever um he ended up getting drafted to the giants at receiver um he was the first pick in the third round um and he was probably 220 pounds so okay. i wasn't much i wasn't much bigger than our smallest or i wasn't much bigger than our biggest receiver but i was much smaller than our our s smallest tight end um so uh i i think it was natural to put me in the slot um, I mean, a lot of things that I did anyways was uh, something that a receiver or a slot receiver would do anyways, um, motioning out of the backfield, being out wide, playing X, playing Y. Uh, so they moved me around. So it was just basically like a hybrid position anyways. All right. And, um, and for the for people watching this, we're, we're going to talk about Travis some more and then we'll get into some, uh, some current Badgers and then I'll let Travis go. Um, Travis, the next question is, you, 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 you know, football's a rough game and you, you had your fair share of injuries in college and the pros. Uh, what was the toughest injury mentally and physically to come back from or just in general? Um, that's a good question. So I've, I, like you said, I, I did have a ton of injuries, um, but I would 
probably say that the toughest one physically, uh, emotionally, uh, was probably in the Super Bowl, tearing my ACL uh, in the second quarter in the Super Bowl. Um, I really, it was really one of those years that um, I, I kind of felt like I had some injuries in, in training camp and throughout the season. Um, didn't have many catches, but we really started to utilize uh, my package. Um, yeah come the playoffs and to go out in the Super Bowl uh, like that was extremely frustrating. And knowing the fact that I had to come back um, the next year because that was my contract year. Um, and so I start the, the season on, on PUP um, and I come back my my fourth year, which is, again, my contract year. And then I tear cartilage in my other knee. And so it's, it's basically um, me going from a third round draft pick being uh, drafted by a team that gave me the opportunity to live my dream. But at the same time, they have a decision to make. Is is this something uh, that we want to invest in Travis's craft? Um, I mean, he's had two uh, season-ending injuries uh, the last two years. Um, and so, yeah, they, they didn't resign me the next year. So I'd probably say my my ACL in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And like you said, you, you really, your, your targets and the, the utilization of you in the offense was really coming on. Yeah. late in the season the most important time of the season um you you were a key part to that to that Super Bowl run um and so it, is there a silver lining for you where you know football is a rough sport yeah especially I mean it, with the brain it's a really tough sport and you yeah. got to be a superstar in college you had a key role on a Super Bowl winning team uh you had that great catch against the Packers is there a silver lining where you were able to accomplish these great things but yet you know, had your career went 10 years, your, your quality of life, like honestly probably yeah. wouldn't be as good as it is now. Is there a silver line that you can see um, with, with your, just the longevity of your life and the health you have right now versus had you had that 10 plus year NFL career if you didn't get injured? Yeah, that, that, that's a, uh, that's a, a really, uh, that's a really good question because when I played football, that was all I knew. Um, and it was one of those things where um, I knew I wanted to play in the NFL when I was five years old. And um, to have a career end the way that mine did was 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 bittersweet because uh, I would watch film and I would watch guys the next season um, knowing that I had more athleticism, uh, more God-given talent than those guys. And I wasn't able to do it. My body couldn't keep up. Um, and again, I, I wanted to play this this, this game for as long as I could. Um, but like you said, I mean, I don't have, uh, I mean, I've, I've had my fair share of injuries. Um, i my body isn't great. Um, but looking back now, I, my health is the most important thing. And, and I mean, I've played with guys like Kevin boss that had to retire early because of concussions and guys are still having, uh, having issues. Tyler Sash played at Iowa um, great safety. We, he played, uh, on my Super Bowl team. Um, and, uh, he ended up committing suicide and they diagnosed his brain. It was full blown CTE. And that was, that was one of those guys that would run down on kickoff. And back in the day where you could have, you can link the arms up. So we're a four man wedge and we just have guys that just run in and blow it up. And, um, you see the outcome of that. So, as much as I would have loved to, to extend my career and, and, and continue to, to, to play the game that I love, um, I'm extremely blessed to be able to, to still be able to have my, my cognitive skills and, and be able to do the things that I can do today. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then on a, a lighter hard note, it's like you football players get, generate so much force and power into your legs. You guys get so strong that you're you see some pretty wild vertical jumps. I always think of Chris Chambers. I mean, he yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. sure was close to like 50 inches. Uh, and you have those videos of like Jim Leonard and the football team going to the gym, throwing down. Did, is there any film of you dunking anywhere? And, and could you throw down some pretty good dunks? Yeah. Um, if we if we had enough time, I, I'm I can go on my my phone and pull up some good videos. Uh, Dude, it's how about funny, this? It's, how about you 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 send it if you uh, send it over to me, I'll overlay it. I'll, I'll throw an overlay on onto the video. Okay. Yeah, you want you're... me to do it right now? No, you can do it after. You can do okay. it after. If you're okay. Okay. Right I'll just that. say because it might it might it might take a little while to. to yeah. Get, no. Get no. Yeah. Video. No rush, man. But yeah, yeah, if you send it over, I want to see it. I want to see yeah. it. Yeah. What was your go-to dunk? Probably a windmill. 
Um, yeah, probably a windmill. I, um, um, yeah, I didn't really try and do too much other stuff. I mean, the 360, uh, I mean, coming probably coming from baseline, I'm not a big, for some reason, like anytime I try to do the 360, I just kind of lose track of where the rim was. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I probably say windmill. I'm not, I'm not doing anything like, uh, I, I saw your, um, I saw your interview with, with AJ store. I'm not doing the stuff that he does, but, <laughs> but, uh, I can get up a little bit. Well, I appreciate you watching it, man. And, and yeah, yeah, I, you know, I, I would have the same, uh, the same problem doing 360s on my door hoop too. I would always just lose, <laughs> lose track of the hoop. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so just a little bit more on your NFL career yeah. real quickly. Um, you, you uh, when you got to the NFL, did you have a welcome to the NFL moment? Um, yeah, I, um, I mean, obviously getting that that call uh, from the Giants. Uh, was a was extremely uh, it was a it was a blessing and it was something that I've, I've waited for my whole life wasn't really too sure how it actually panned out um, told my friends family make sure that, that they don't call me on that day so uh, getting that call was amazing but then but then going out with the team and um, that first team dinner and you think everything's all great and stuff and you're ordering wine and and crab legs and all this. And then all of a sudden everybody gets up and leaves you with the bill. <laughs> um, so, uh, it's a nice, nice call that I, that I had, uh, to make to my financial advisor. Hey, my, uh, my credit card might be a little high this month. Just wanted to yeah. give you a heads up. They got me. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. And, and, and was there a, a player that you matched up with or played alongside where you're like, what? you know, a little starstruck or like, Oh, I can't believe this is so-and-so that I'm playing with or against. Yeah, um, I, I think it was a blessing, obviously, to, to to play with with guys like Eli and and uh, Brandon Jacobs. But I I do remember um, it was my my freshman year, or my my rookie year. Uh, we're playing at Minnesota, um, and this is Brett Favre's last year. Okay, and they um, uh, I'm on punt return. Brett Favre runs on the field, and I'm like running off to the sidelines and I'm staring at Brett Favre and I just like stop and stare. I'm like, that, 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 that's, re that's really Brett Favre. And it's just crazy <laughs> because me growing up watching those guys and yeah. he was one of those guys when I was five, six years old being like, that's, that's somebody that, that I want to have the ability to be like, and uh, to be able to play against him. Uh, my, my rookie year was awesome. But yeah, and you mentioned two names, Eli Manning, Brand Jacobs. I was a big fan, you know, Jacobs, 6'4", yeah. 260, ran a 4'640", and then, yeah, Eli Manning. Um, I, I always, I, I, I was a big fan of Manning. Um, yeah. What was Eli like as a leader, and do you yeah. have any good Eli Manning stories? Oh, man. Uh, Eli, Eli was, Eli was awesome. He, he, he has a ton of sarcastic humor. One of those guys that would tell a joke and just keep a straight face. I'm like, I don't know if this guy's being serious or not. What's going sure. on? Um, but but uh, yeah, Eli, Eli was Eli was a prankster. Um, Eli was the one of those guys that um, you would go in uh, right before you go to practice. You'd go into your locker, realize that your keys are gone, go out to see where your car is. Your car is gone cars parked in the middle of the football field. Uh, so it was just one of those things. There was a funny story where they did park Eli's car like four miles away, but, but, um, <laughs> but, but Eli, Eli's a, um, he's a leader by, by example, he goes out there and does what he needs to do. He's one of those guys that's going to spend extra hours, um, trying to help you perfect your craft by watching film. Um, and then, when we brought up Brandon Jacobs, Brandon Jacobs is more so, uh, he's a vocal leader. He's one of those guys that, um, he's unlike Eli. Eli will, will throw a touchdown pass. Uh, he'll get excited. He'll run off the sideline and get ready to do it again. Um, Brandon Jacobs is one of those guys, uh, he'll run you over. Uh, and he'll tell you he ran you over. Then he, then he'd help, then he'd help you back up. So, um, but yeah, Eli, uh, e Eli was an awesome leader. Um, very, very uh, quiet, um, but but kind of went in and just got his job done and, and went about his life. Yeah, and and I, I remember I, I went to a um, it was one I went to one Packer game since, but I went to a Packer game. It was against the Giants in the playoffs, and I remember because I, I I was a big Brandon Jacobs fan. I, I would watch him even like special teams and stuff. 
Yeah. And dude yeah. was, <laughs> I swear, the dude was just running over everything in sight. Like the kicker's just minding his own business. Rand Jacobs is going and finding him, running him over it. It, yeah. it was funny. He, he, was a, he was a force out there. Yeah. And, and that was the thing is like, I mean, obviously bringing me in as, as a receiving tight end, and I'm 6'3, 235 pounds. And it's like, why are you bringing me in on an offense where the running back is 6'4, 260 pounds? Like, <laughs> he should be blocking for me. Shouldn't be yeah. the other way around. So, no, oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. So yeah, moving into some current uh, current Badger football questions. Obviously, you work for the university, but I just want your general thoughts on Luke Fickle's first year. What, what what do you think of it? Um, I uh, I, I think they they finished the season well. Um, I think if we were to look at uh, statistically, like a seven and five season isn't terrible. Um, is that to Coach Fickle's full potential? Absolutely not. Um, and he's coming in um, with a statement to make, and he is going to turn this program around. Um, I think we we brought in a, a system that didn't fit the current players. Um, so I think with, with sure. within this transfer portal and 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 the recruiting habits, um, and the recruiting guys uh, from from different states and, and, and different type of athletes, I think that next year will be a completely different story. Um, I'm all on board with Coach Fickle. Um, I think that it's it's something that we needed. Um, again, he's done great things at Ohio State, done great things at Cincinnati. Um, I just think that with all the hype that we had going in. Um, that we kind of set ourselves up because I think he did do a great job of coaching. We just didn't really have all the right athletes to fill what we're trying to accomplish from an offensive and, and defensive standpoint. Sure. And uh, well, what positions are you looking for Wisconsin to really hammer at in, in the portal here? Um, well, we need some receivers. Yeah, uh, I, agree. I, I really like um, – I was really excited to, to see what uh, Nick Evers could do. Um, and um, I, so quarterback is, is another position. Um, I, it, Chez is coming back, correct? I, I mean, I feel like you would know better than me. <laughs> so, yeah. So I haven't, you know what? It's funny is I haven't really heard too much buzz about it. Um, I sure hope so, is. so, so hopefully Chez comes back. Um, but um, I think receivers are huge. Obviously, we need a quarterback. We really need to figure out what we're going to do with our offensive line, uh, defensive linemen. If we can get some Nick Herbig, some Keanu Bettens, um, yeah. I think Ricardo Holman. Like we, we, we need guys that are going to go out there and play. Like I, I love the the pickup, uh, the kid from Syracuse, um, and I just want. I just hope that that we bring in guys that are going to be playmakers, guys that are going to come in and instantly. Uh, make a difference. Um, I, I think we really need to, to capitalize on the fact that uh, we're implementing a new system uh, and it's not your ground and pound running the football every yeah. down. So athletes that are fast, let's go, let's go down South. Let's get these Florida and Texas athletes. Um, and let's capitalize on those guys and, and, and hopefully have a much better uh, season next year. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, I, I, I feel, I feel bad for Mordecai because I would be watching, you know, I would watch the games. It's like, a lot of times, no one's open. No one yeah. could, could really create much space. So, and if it felt like Mordecai was really starting to figure things out at the end of the year, despite that, man, I wish Mordecai had another year. I, I really, I yeah. really liked his game. I liked his mobility. I wish he had one more year with another group of receivers. But oh well. But yeah, receivers yeah. is big for me. And then yeah, outside outside linebacker that's huge. Um, yep. I, I think having uh, oh shoot, uh, Herbig. Having yeah. a her big this year would have solved a lot of issues because there really yeah. was not much pressure on the quarterback at all. But I like you, you do have some star power with Coleman and Waller, but I think they need yeah. the, someone to apply a little pressure. So those are yeah, absolutely spots for me. So um, yeah. So Wisconsin's obviously they got a pretty cool bowl game against LSU. Um, it was like number fifteen in the country, something like that. But in the age of the portal, how much momentum can you truly build off of a bowl victory? Um, going, like going into the next season. Yeah. Um, 
that's tough because I, I think our situation is going to be a lot different than say the Minnesotas, because you have a system already implemented that uh, you plan on running the next year. Uh, we're mm. still trying to find a fit for the athletes that we're bringing in. Um, I think that, uh, I think the bowl game is, 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 is another opportunity. Um, and bowl prep is another opportunity for, um, the players to, to figure out who wants to be here because coach fickle isn't playing around. It, it's, it's, we got to figure out who wants to be here. Um, yeah. and I, I think that, I think I'm a little biased because I, I'm from Wisconsin and, uh, I, I didn't play much my freshman year and I ended up becoming uh, an All-American my second year at a completely different position. So I think that's that's me waiting in and out. And I think that was the sole reason was because I was from Wisconsin. Um, but these guys now, you just never know. Uh, you Anytime you, you see these good players um, and you hear the stats on the TV and, and they're like, oh, well, it transfers from, from so-and-so and so-and-so. And, and that's the biggest thing is like they harp on, on family and leadership and, and building yourself up and bonding together. And it's like your family just doesn't get up, up and leave it. If, if people face adversity in hard times, yeah. like that's not what family's about. So, um, but yeah, I, I think it's good for, um, the guys to have, um, more time together. Uh, but again, I think it's really going to be crucial in regards to who's going to figure out who's going to be here next year or not. Yeah. And, uh, and kind of just diving back into something you said before, I, if Malusi comes back, man, I don't know if there's a player I'll be rooting for harder than him because just injuries, yep. three seasons, three injuries. And he was looking really good this year. I, I think yeah. he's a game changer. If you can bring back Malusi, that I think that would really, really help things in the offense. So yeah. I really, I'm really hoping he comes back. But, yeah, no, Chez was Chez was huge um, for us, and he really made he really made Braylon work for it. Um, yeah. And I mean, he's had obviously the the, the two uh, injuries the last two years, and and also Clay Cundiff, which unfortunately had to end his career because he had the two season, um, the two season ending injuries two years in a row too. So I, I feel for these guys, um, but um, but hopefully this this NIL gives them an opportunity to not only uh, just just find a way to put cash in their pocket, but 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 build their brand, uh, realize that there is life after football. Um, and at the end of the day, all you are is, is, is your name. You have your name and your story at the end of the day. So make sure you're taking advantage of it. Yeah, no, no doubt. And I do think that not having that kind of one, two punch with, with Allen and Malusi, that, that yeah. changed things for Wisconsin as well, Absolutely. especially in a year where our receivers uh, weren't getting super open. Um, so something that, and another thing area that wasn't Great. I mean, it wasn't awful, but just the, the big boys on, on both sides of the ball, I think yeah. you can use improvement. Um, but I, you know, I've heard this argument before. That's a little different than going to the portal for skilled position players is, do you think that, that it might take some time to really solidify the offensive line, the defensive line? Like I'm talking like not the edge, but like the, the big boys, the nose tackles, like, do you think it's going to take some time to get where we want to be? Because, it, that could be something that you is it's much better to to grow it out of high school and then kind of build them up. Um, can, how much do you think you can build a line off the portal, or do you think that's something that should be more internal? And we'll we'll take a few years to get where we want to be. Um, see, that's another good question because I think it comes down to what we're trying to accomplish from the offensive line. Like, if you think about over the past few years and in, in your typical Wisconsin offensive linemen, like they're big, they're strong. Uh, they can move North and South, but, but what we're trying to do from an offensive standpoint in, in, in Phil Longo's offense, these are going to be different type of, of, of offensive linemen. And um, almost like you think about the Joe Thomases and like, it, it's really hard to compare our, our guys to, to Joe Thomas, but, but Joe was never huge. Joe was always, and it's crazy because people always ask me who was one of the best athletes that you ever played with. And it was Joe Thomas because Joe Thomas wasn't your traditional offensive tackle. Like he was one of those guys that can go in and play guard. He can go in and play. No, like he was just one of those guys that, that was on the more athletic side. He wasn't just, he wasn't just a huge bulky 
bulky guy. Like he was extremely strong. He was able to move. He was agile. Um, but as far as the transfer portal, that's tough. I think obviously film is, is huge. Um, one of the guys reached out to me um, the other day in regards to um, a, a tackle uh, from Western Kentucky that that wants to come here and watch his film. Super good. Um, but I think it comes down to what we're trying to do on the offensive side of the ball. If we're trying to run more veers, if we're trying to get east and west, like what are we, what are we trying to accomplish? Um, but yeah, typically like uh, from your Wisconsin athletes, I think you're so used to just getting the guys that are big and just, just take up space. I don't think that's what we're trying to do anymore. Yeah. And I mean, the portal, you can bring in so many players so quickly, but there is something to be said about just, you know, retention. I know Fickle said that he wants to grow through high school and have retention, but you got to use the portal as well. Um, how long do you think it will take? You know, you talk about Fickle's potential. How long do you think it will take for Wisconsin to, to or for Fickle to, to get to a spot where he's maximizing his potential and then Wisconsin's where he wants yeah. to be? Um. So I think if you would have asked me this question um, at this time last year, I would have said, I think that he's going to come in and make a statement his first year. But after seeing the the, the struggles um, from the players uh, and uh, the routes and the drop balls and the offensive line, um, the play of the defense, um, I don't, I, I think, I think it right now, it's, again, it's about, it's about bringing in guys that, that fit the system, what we're trying to do. I think this year will be much better. Um, but I think, to be honest with you, I think uh, two years will really be to where we can really say that, that Wisconsin is a powerhouse to where, I mean, because our, our schedule isn't getting any easier. And that's, that's yeah. something that, that fickle took on that challenge by, by, by coming in here and saying that you want to play the Alabamas and the Washingtons and the Oregons. Like it's where it's not getting any easier and we can't sit here and, and mope on. Unfortunately, they bring in a ton of Wisconsin guys that, that, that we don't, we can't have guys that want to be on this team because they're from Wisconsin and their dream was to just play at Wisconsin. And that's it. Like we need guys that, that want to come in, that want to be from Wisconsin, that want to win a national championship, that want to go on to the next level and be the next Joe Thomas. Like we need guys that that, that come in and, and want to be great. We can't just sit here and, and play play guys and recruit guys based off of our feelings. Like we, we have a job to do. Fickle has Fickle's getting paid a ton of money and that, yeah. th those feelings don't pay the bills. And uh, last question I have for you before a rapid fire round. Um, what do you have in the college football playoffs? Who do you think is going to win it all? Um, I like I like I like Alabama. Do I? But but do I say Michigan because of Big Ten? Michigan's hot. Um, I think uh, I think Michigan. I think Mich Michigan might take it all. Okay, they, they have a good they have a good football program. There we go. So yeah, I'll, now I'll finish off a rapid fire round. So I'll give you a bunch of questions. Just answer them in a timely fashion. Sound good? All right. All right. Uh, favorite all-time football player? Brett Favre. Favorite holiday? Christmas. Favorite NFL teammate? Jake Ballard. Um, favorite college teammate? TJ Theus. Your favorite tight end of all time. That's not you. Probably Ooh. Antonio Gates. Favorite movie. Little Giants. Favorite food. Fried chicken. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Uh, favorite animal. Liger. <laughs> favorite place in the world. Uh, Sweden. Um, funniest teammate you've ever had? Jarvis Minton. Any hidden talents that you have? Um, a DJ? Write okay. poetry? Good deal. Very cool. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite workout? Favorite workout? Uh, probably... 
probably bench press still. Okay, good deal. And then your least favorite workout? Squats. Squats. All right, so two more here. One, if you could choose any fellow Badger, uh, Badger tight end, to be your tight end two, your tight end number one, to play alongside with you in the NFL, who would it be? Jake Ferguson. Ferguson, all right. Are there any dreams or goals that you have in, in the future that, that are firing you up right now? Yeah, so um, my dream was to play in the NFL. Uh, I, I did that uh, and took win a Super Bowl uh, was meant that much more. But my goal now is, is, is what I'm doing. Uh, and that was to uh, be, an, be an access uh, or be an asset to the current athletes um, and be able to, to tell my story and kind of help guide them on their journeys and, and their paths. Um, but yeah, I think my goal is, is, is to be uh, an asset to the current student athletes. Awesome. And that's Travis Beckham. Travis, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you uh, coming on the show and I'm looking forward to staying connected along the way. Appreciate you, Matt. I appreciate you having me.